Conexão Bet está de volta ao vivo aqui do estúdio Bet Brasil, dentro do Expo Center Norte, na 29ª edição da Bet Brasil. Então, agora eu vou receber mais um convidado, é o Les Foltos, ele é diretor da Peer ID e lidera a equipe que ajuda 48 países a implementar o Peer Coaching. O Les Foltos, ele é americano, então a entrevista será feita em inglês. Nice to meet you. Yeah, it's great to meet you too. Welcome to Conexão Batch. I'm glad to be here. First of all, I'd like that you introduce yourself. Who is Les Fultos? Oh, well, um, first and foremost, I'm a teacher. And then I spent 11 years outside of the classroom as the director of educational technology for Seattle schools. And for the last 20 years, I've been lucky enough to work with educators in more than 48 countries around the world, helping them uh, prepare to be peer coaches. And peer coaches are teachers who help other teachers, collaborate with other teachers to improve teaching and learning. So that's a little bit about who I am. Great. Can you explain more how peer coaching works? Sure. Um, we start with the assumption that the coach is not an expert with the answer, but the coach is a true peer, someone that other teachers can learn with and from. And so instead of sitting down with a teacher and saying, well, this is what's wrong, here's how you fix it, they sit down and they have a conversation that's designed to understand what the teacher's needs are, understand really clearly. And then rather than offering an answer or a solution, a coach will raise questions that are designed to get the teacher to think more deeply about the questions that they face, the issues that they have. And if you ask enough of the right kind of probing questions, the teachers come up with the answer themselves. It's their answer. You're building their capacity to improve teaching and learning. So that's really what coaching is all about in a nutshell. Does the peer coaching exist in Brazil? It does. In fact, the first time I was here in 2005, um, I helped to train a large number of Brazilians who, who in fact went out and helped other, uh, train other teachers to become coaches. So yes, absolutely, it's here in Brazil and I'm very proud of that. This is your first time in Bet Brazil? It's my first time in Bet Brazil, although in 2022 I presented virtually. But the first time here at the event, yeah. How can educators apply the methodology in the classroom? Well, I think that um, the heart of coaching is collaboration. So I think that they can look for somebody that's interested in collaborating, somebody who's interested in improving teaching and learning. You're not there to fix anyone, nothing's wrong. You're just there to help improve teaching and learning. And then you're probably gonna find out that it's a personal or professional friend. When you sit down, you wanna have a conversation with them about their classroom, what they like what they're doing what they'd like to improve. Once you get to the point where you have that conversation about what they'd like to improve, then you have this natural relationship to begin talking about how to improve, specifically how to improve teaching and learning and make learning more powerful, more active, more engaging for students. Let's talk about your speech in Batch Brazil today. Um, it is about wisdom, right? Well, it's um, a funny title and it's all about the wisdom of teachers learning from one another. The value and power of teachers learning together. Teachers always tell me, we learn better together. In your opinion, uh, is the school the best place to acquire wisdom? Schools are a perfect place to acquire wisdom, but as we know, um, students never stop learning. 
Yes. And they're only in school a short period of the day. So what we want is that they keep learning all the time. And what we really want to do is make sure that what we do in the classroom ties in with their learning outside of school, their interests, their experiences, what they care about. If we can do that, learning is more powerful. Can you tell us other ways uh, we um, have to be wise? Other ways, excuse me, other ways what? To, um, we can be wise, sir. Um, I think that um, these skills, um, either on the part of students or on the part of teachers, can be acquired through um, just working together and asking yourself. One of the questions I'm going to ask participants today is, what's the best professional learning you've ever participated in? And what made it powerful? And what they're likely to say is we love learning with and from other teachers. We like breaking down isolation. We like the chances to collaborate together. That's the kind of climate we have to create in schools and the kind of climate that would be good for students who are trying to learn outside of school. There is a specific age to acquire wisdom. I hope not. I think <laughs> learning is uh, lifelong. Um, one of the things that uh, I like about working with educators is that many of them say things like, we're all learners and we will be for the rest of our lives. That's what we want. Because life's changing rapidly around us. Careers are changing rapidly. The economy's changing rapidly. If we're not lifelong learners, we're going to be left out. Can you give us more tips to earn wisdom? Well, I would say that what I talk to teachers about is this. You really want to make sure that you're trying to learn as much as you can about your students understand as much as you can about your students and then make sure you connect the learning activities that you're offering students with their experiences outside of school. I once worked with a, a grade four teacher in Portugal. She was a remarkable teacher and what she said to me is this, it's really simple. If they're interested, they'll learn. If they're not, they won't. And how do you make it interesting? You tie it learning into their lives outside of school. You make it valuable for them and others in their community. Would you like to finish this interview with a message? Maybe that was the message. <laughs> Maybe that was the best message. Make sure that what you're doing in the classroom is exciting to students in their lives outside of the classroom, that it's interesting to them. And they'll take over and they'll do the learning. Liz, thank you very much for the interview. I'm very happy that you are here. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. I enjoyed this chance to talk with you. You are always invited to come back to Brazil and to Batch Brazil too. Well, perfect, thanks. I'll take you up on that offer. Thank you. Muito bem, a gente continua aqui o nosso Conexão Bet, agora com uma conversa com a Adriana Foz, neuropsicóloga, especialista em educação emocional e diretora da NeuroConnect, sobre como a neurociência pode ajudar educadores no processo de ensino aos seus alunos, além de incentivar o desenvolvimento socioemocional. A gente assiste esse conteúdo e logo mais voltamos ao vivo com Conexão Bet. Até já!